Well, welcome back to Digger Detecting, everybody. Today we're out in the bush and we're chasing that gold once again. Andrew's got the GPX 5000 there in hand and I've got the GPX 6000 sitting there waiting to go. And I must say, it's looking mighty fine with this brand new Double D leather canvas cover. We're going to protect it whilst we're out prospecting today. So we also have the boys with us today, the Walkie Talkie and the Digger Men. So they've both got a Walkie Talkie. Where's your pick? You don't have a pick. Oh, you're going to use PARs. So Xavier's going to go with PAR. Dom, you're going to come with me. And they're going to provide all the best of luck today. And uh, just something we've got in the boot that we brought with us today. Uh, something very, very cool. And uh, we're going to show you a look at a little bit later. And uh, just for anybody out there wondering, yes, I've put my sonnies in the car this time. I'm not going to take them out with me uh, detecting because, well, last week when we were, uh, well, well, last week when we were detecting, uh, I took my shirt off. Uh, it was getting hot. I took my shirt off with my sonnies in my top pocket. And, well, we lost the shirt. We lost the sonnies. Uh, somewhere off into the bush. I don't know. So today I'm going to keep my shirt on. Uh, we've got the sunnies in the boot. We're right to go. Uh, let's get out and find the gold. Hey Dom, do you know what this is? Can you see that? See the trench running right through? I think this is where some gold would be. Well, there might be gold in there. That's a water race, buddy. So what the miners would have done, they would have cut this channel to direct water into a certain area. So the water would have been coming down off the hill here and they would have needed to direct it, instead of it going down into the creek, they would have needed to direct it into their mines, into their holes. So they would have cut this water race right down and it would have fed some of the miners' holes when they didn't have water. Oh. So it's a water race. We just found a water race. That means people go in there and they race. No. All right, what do we got here, Dom? Oh, you might be the king of the mountain, but what do we got, king? We got possibly gold. We got possibly gold. Oop, camera's going all over the place. I'm trying to get the tripod set up on, on uh, with my left hand. Let's have a listen. Move your pick, mate. Ready? You can see we've already had a bit of a scratch out there. So let's just take a boot full out. A little bit more. It may, may be nothing. No, 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 you move that pick out of the way. I think I found it. Move your pick well out of the way. Get out of the way. Detectors, gold detectors are super sensitive. They're not like uh, coin relic machines, my boy. Right, what we're going to do, you can see that we've got our target somewhere around here, Dom. So we're going to dig that out and we're going to set you up on the tripod so you can have a look as we go. Right, here we go. Take this out a little bit. You don't want to go too far down, Doc. Mm. Because I reckon our target is almost out, buddy. Yeah, same. Are you just agreeing with me? Yeah, I actually think it's close. Sounds like we've got another target. Where are we? Just put the detector down, too. I still haven't got him out. Let's have a look. Oh, I need to get down. Very handy. There's our target. No? Yes. Needs washing the pond. It's rust. Oh, great. Time for rust. That's a big rust nugget. I'll wash it in the pond. Wash all the rust off it. Might turn gold. Ta da! On to the next, buddy. Right, well we're teaching Dom on this next target how a gold machine works. It's a little bit different than uh, a coin relic machine, mate. See how we've got our target in our hand here? Mm -hmm. And what's happening? When I go over the coil, what happens? It detects the, something that's in there, like gold or something. And then we just need to find it. 
What's happening though? Can you hear that tone? Yeah. It means something's in that pile. Put your pick near the um, coil. What does your pick do? What? That's a big bit of gold. All right, take your pick away. <laughs> so, is it in this hand? Yeah. Is it in this no. hand? Dump that dirt out. Must have left him in this hand. Yes. Can you hear it? Yes. So we divide the dirt. Is it in that hand? Nope. Get rid of the dirt. Is this going to be gold? Is it in that hand? Yes. No. Dump the dirt. I thought that was all the gold. And you straight away see what that is. Can you come and tell me what we've got? It's a bullet. I thought bullets were just like a line and then a triangle. Well, no, that's a shotgun pallet. That's a shotgun bullet. So someone shot a shotgun and about 28 of these little guys that come out and one of them's landed over here. Mm. And we've got the other 27 to pick up still. Great. Great. Let's keep going. All right, what have you found, Dom? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Me neither yet, although I've got a good target underneath my coil, well, sort of under my coil, off to the side here. And we're uh, propped up on the side of a mully keep at the moment. As you can see there is uh, below is the gully. We're working up the top of the gully where the, uh, the miners were following the ancient riverbed. So that is the creek now that you can see, or the, uh, the lowest point of the gully. Uh, but originally the miners were following this high side of this mountain, of this, uh, of this slope, of this ridge. And you can see all their holes and uh, whatnot as they're running through. A few of a uh, few water races are running back down to the gully. Uh, but uh, that's sort of where I'm targeting. Dom's having a bit of fun with the pick there. And a few bits of lead, a few bits of rust. And here we are at our next target. You just notice there too, I'm quieting the 6000 down just by putting him into auto one mode. And just while I've got the camera going. So what are we going to say, buddy? Tell the audience something. What are you going to tell us? If you find a hole that looks suspicious, throw something down there because a lot of people actually made traps for other people so that they don't get what they, the other people have. So do you reckon the miners are building traps? Mm. So what are you saying? Some of these holes could have a false bottom. You can see they're on auto one, it's really cool. You can have it in uh, quiet mode, or basically like uh, threshold off basically, which is auto one and auto two uh, default setting. Uh, back to max sensitivity though. Uh, you can have it with the threshold on in the background. Uh, but as I said, just um, uh, to cut out that threshold tone uh, while we're digging, uh, we're just uh, flicking them on to auto one. I probably should be doing uh, noise cancel on the ground balance every time uh, that I switch back. But I'm not, and that's okay. So let's just have a bit of a scratch away at this. And if it gets serious, we're going to put you on the tripod because we're in a prime location for this to be gold. It's got a sweet sound about it too. A couple of inches deeper, I would presume. So let's do it. Let's set you up with a tripod and let's dig him out together. Got him out, Dom? I don't know yet. We've got to find him. This is definitely not a false bottom. I dig down and there's nothing below. There's just dirt. Alright, we've got him in the hand. Where you see the first bit of gold? Probably. Probably gold. You've seen me find gold before anyway. Mm. Oh no. Not gold. 
old. You know what it is, my boy? What? What did we get before? 26 left. Tw 26 left. Spot on. 26 bullets left to go. Well, what did we just get on that target, Dominic? I don't know. I was over there. <laughs> You're over there talking to Zave on the radio. Yeah. Uh, another bit of lead. So we've got uh, rust nuggets, we've got uh, lead, we've got everything. We've got everything we come out here for today. Except uh, for one thing. What? Gold. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. We're out here for fun. I know. So, and we're having fun? Mm -hmm. Yeah? And you've been digging up holes and you've been hitting trees and what else have you been doing? Talking to Zave on the radio? Yeah. While I've been scratching holes in the ground. So, look, that's what it's all about. It's about the fun. And, uh, look, we do have something very special to show you at the end of this video, or a little bit later on any anyway today. We'll get it out of the boot, and we're going to swing it over the coil. What do you think it is, Dom? What are we swinging over the coil? More lead? More rust? Or maybe some shiny yellow... Gold. Gold. Okay. Shh, don't say it. Okay. All right, okay. call your brother up. We're going for some lunch. And we might... We might have been. Yep. Say so, over and out, copy rubber ducky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll go for some lunch too. And uh, look, I think I think we're going to move some sites. So we'll move sites. We've got this one here, a great gully to work through. We've been picking up a lot of lead and rust. So, uh, so let's for the afternoon uh, change sites and see if we can't change our luck. So just before we pack up and completely get out of here, I was just telling Andrew I did find a signal uh, in a rock, and I didn't show you guys on film either, but we were down in the creek there before, and we uh, we got a signal in the bank. Uh, I basically um, set the detector down. I moved this big rock with the pick out of the way, and then, well, you'll see it when we get down there. I swung the detector back over where the rock was, and the signal was gone. Uh, so I swung the uh, detector over the rock that i just removed, and bingo, the signal was in the rock. Uh, so we're going to leave the 6 there in the boot, Andrew's going to take his 5,000 down uh, because I heard it with the 6,000. If the 5,000 can hear it, well, I've got a green bag I shoved into my front pocket, and uh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take that rock home. We're going to break it in half, smash it, smash it. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, let's see how much gold we've got in it. No, no caustic, just a, a sledgehammer. <laughs> so I've got one that'll uh, work quite well. I've got one in mind that'll bust that open, no worries. So anyway, that's what we're going to do. We'll walk you down. I'm going to make sure I've got my keys on me. We'll walk you down and uh, we're going to go uh, recover the rock. Do you want to know something funny, Andrew? I don't really know where I left it. <laughs> it's, it's somewhere. Look at all that rubbish being dumped. Shocking. Uh, that makes our job harder, doesn't it, Andrew? You and Pa went this way. Oh, right. Well, I went this way and I found like a creek or something. Where did we go, Dom? Dom, you're, Dom, you're supposed to be the GPS man. Uh, I know where it is. This looks familiar. This looks really familiar. I've been here before. Come on, children. Come on, children. He's a big kid. All right, there's the creek. We're on the money. We'll just bash our way straight through here and we're going to find it. Yeah, so that's the creek I was in. Thinking, oh, nice exposed ground. There's our rock. There it is. Rock on. So there we go, there's the situation right there. Uh, we uh, detected a signal, uh, the rock was in the side bank there. Uh, we detected a signal and uh, we basically pulled out the rock and uh, basically went back over the detector, the signal was gone. So it's in the rock. Let's, uh, let's lift him up, I'll throw him up on the bank here. Oh, that's a hard grab left hand. Oh no. I had a signal with the 6000. That sounds pretty quiet, Andrew. <laughs> now, the question is, do I lug the rock back up the hill to the 6,000? Because I didn't bring it with me.
I can actually hear something there. Yeah, you can hear a little wobble. A little wobble? Mm -hmm. Wobble. Wobble. Just. I can just hear something in it. Let's look over again. That was my watch. Can you hear it, Dom? You're a funny bugger, Dom. There's a little warble in there, I reckon. All right, well, the question is, do we take the rock back to the car? Because it sounded so good with the 6,000, we are hearing a little faint uh, murmur. A little wobble. 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 Now name the wobble. Little one there. Little one there. Yeah, All right, so. let's take it back to the car. Let's run over to the 6,000 before we move sites, and uh, let's see what we've got. We are burning time, though, aren't we? There goes half an hour. There he is. Oh. Now you've got to carry him out of there. Oh. No. <laughs> hey boys, what does this mean when you see a whole a bunch of sticks and leaves and twigs and everything are bunched up around the uh, the branches, around the trees here? Look, same's going on over here. What's it mean? Campfire. Camp campfire? Animal. Animal. Look, you've got more over here. Sticks, leaves, logs, all built up and hit on the trees and stopped. Why do you think that would be? Why would they Animal making a house. Animal making a house. Do you think an animal would make a house like this, though? So? Like, where's where's its actual house? I don't I don't see it. Around the back here. Beavers, mate. Beavers. <laughs> nah. Well, actually. Why would they make this right here? Well, that's a tree. That's just grown. But what's actually happened, uh, boys, is the water. You see, the water goes this way. So the water has pushed all these sticks, leaves, branches down here, and through the flood of the water, they've been caught up by these trees here. So it's not campers, uh, camping, it's not uh, animals building uh, habitats or shelters. That is literally just water flow. And it's all built up around the tree. And you can see the, uh, the water level, you know, when you get up on the, uh, on the banks, uh, you often see this and you can see just how far the water gets up. So quite interesting. It, uh, it pays uh, to know your surroundings. Mm -hmm. Right, back at the car. We're gonna give this rock a test. Rock on. I see if we've got something in it with the 6,000 because I did before and I could hear it a clear as day. Let's just see if it's uh, any difference to the 5,000 there. And if it's clear, well, we're going to take him home and bust him open. Let's wait for the machine to start up here. There's my whales. Oh, there's a target right there too. It's called the car. <laughs> see how sensitive that is? Yeah. And how different it is to Andrew's. Let's just do a ground balance here quickly. Pretty quiet. Yeah, let's just move him off that patch of ground too. Move the rock down the hill a bit. Who said rocks can't roll? Just so you can see, like if there was a target you know, sitting under that rock there, uh, potentially we would have been hitting on him, just like I thought in the creek. So it's over near you a bit more, Andrew. Yeah, it's on this corner, eh? Have we got a big gold nugget in there? We've got something in there. Got something in there, something sending the detector off. Let's do one more gra ground balance here. Let's try and quieten that out a little bit. Let's see if we can even ground balance that noise out. There you go. Sounds like something to me. Well, was it worth lugging that rock up the hill? I think so. <laughs> I think so. I think so. When, when it might be a hot rock, but... That's a big hot rock, mate. Yeah, it's a big hot rock. But they do get big. They do get big, yeah. yeah well, I don't think I've ever found one that big. No, neither have I. Interesting. It's got my attention. It's got my intrigue. And now it's going to come home with us and get smashed open with my hammer. All right, Dom. So we're in our new spot. How are we going, mate? Good. Good. Let's just uh, turn that threshold off. It's a nice, new, clean spot. A lot cleaner than where we were before. 
you can see there the cars going through the bush so we're not too far off the road and this gully has got a few tributaries running off it and running into it so we're just sort of working our way down through the gully a past couple of tributaries already and we're leading on to the next ones which is just down where Andrew and Zave are uh, so hopefully they don't um, steal all the gold on us we've got a target here though uh, it was somehow here let's just move the pick out of the way and we'll turn that threshold back on back to sensitivity or the highest max sensitivity there off auto one so just been doing that bit lately uh, where is my target gone there he is uh, so just doing that a bit lately especially while we're on film uh, just going up into auto one and you can see there it cuts out the threshold uh, back to uh, manual sensitivity max And we've got a target there. So let's just give a scratch across the ground first. Very important you don't go too far too quick. How's that sound, Dom? All day I've been telling Dom, get away from me with that pick too. The uh, difference between gold detectors and uh, coin relic detectors are their sensitivity. Are the, uh, the coin relic detectors, they're nowhere near as sensitive as the gold detectors. Watch this. I'm miles away from the coil and we're getting the signal. So all day I've been saying, Dom, get away from me with your pick, mate. Because uh, uh, I'm sitting there, you know, one hand. I try, oh, there he goes again. Sitting there one hand trying to find my target and he, he wanders over with the pick and uh, well, I've lost where I'm up to. So let's have a very light scrape on that one. Let's have a listen. He's there. Let's have a bit of a ground balance beside the hole. Just swing back and forth and pump the coil up and down. And release that trigger. Let's have a look. Right, so he sounds like he's just about there. So let's open that up now. And now we've got all the, uh, the leaves and whatnot scraped back. And let's open up a bit of a hole here and see what comes of it. Well, Dom, you would not believe what we've got. What is it? Another little tiny bit of lead, number 25. 25, really? <laughs> <laughs> that is the tiniest, tiniest little bit of lead shot I've found today. Everything else is, well, only a little bit bigger than that, but definitely uh, definitely not that small. So into the bottle, we're getting rich, rich with um, rusty nuggets and lead bullets. And let's keep going. Next target, buddy. Yeah, let's have some fun. Let's have some fun? Yeah. Well, it sounds good. Sounds like number 25 to me. And remember, we got something very special to show at the end of today's video. What is it, do you reckon? Gold. Gold? Wait. Well, hopefully we get some gold out of the ground too. Oh, this looks like nice dirt, Dom. Yeah. Doesn't look like where a shell, uh, a slug bullet would hide. Dang. Looks like where gold would hide. In that nice orangey type clay with all that mineralized dirt, mm. stones. Perfect ground for gold. Yep, it's and he's out. Special. All right, we're getting gold on this one, Dom. Hold on to your horses. <laughs> Not that one. You hear my watch going off? Not that one. He's in this um, pipe sort of clay mix. This one. Right there. Let's go after him. We'll make a flat uh, pad. You leave all your dirt there. What happens is, um, well, you drop him. You've got to go back through all your pile of dirt. Mm. He's in the scoop. He's not in the scoop. Not a bullet, not a bullet, not a bullet. He's out of there. That's not going to be it. Not a bullet. Well, 
What did you just say, Dom? Not a bullet? You can do bullets. You can do bullets. Are you praying, are you? No. I can hear you praying. No. Well, you know the unfortunate thing about lead, Dom? What? It sounds so much like gold. And I really thought we were on the money there. There he is. 25. Oh, but look, that is the perfect dirt, you know, that highly mineralized orange pipe sort of clay are going on there with all the quartz stones and iron stone coming out. A bingo. I didn't think it was going to be a bit of lead. I honestly thought that's where we'd find the first bit of gold. Not to be, Basil. That's all right. We'll just keep trying. And the gold game, look, the gold game is not the easiest game. I knew that already coming into it. I remember we had the 4500. I remember we found gold already. But it took us about six months to find my first bit of gold. Funnily enough, where I found it too, well, there's a bit of a story to that too, which we'll share very soon. Let's keep going. Well, we're just walking along and uh, detecting along these mullock heaps and all these tailing piles. And I just spotted this. Someone's really went to town here. You can see all the, all the dirt that they've pulled out. And uh, even up on the, uh, on the tailings pile up the back here, same thing. You can see the, uh, the level from the miners, how they left it. You can see how much has just been taken out. So whether someone was panning this, uh, sluicing it, uh, look, doing bags of pay dirt up, maybe they're finding a really tiny spicks of gold in it uh, just by panning it off. None of the other tailing piles have been touched thus far that I've seen. This is the first one that I've come across. So as I said, you can just see how much work someone's done. They pulled all the tailings out from there. And then down where the, uh, the 6,000 is, same thing again. Let's take you down to ground level. A tailing original ground level was up here and the mound would have went all the way down to there. So they've taken all of this and I've hummed around here looking for uh, signals. There is no targets, not one. Uh, so not even a, uh, a lead bullet for us over this, uh, over this area. There we go, how interesting. What was someone doing here? I don't know. Well, not too far away from where we just shot that last clip, uh, just pretty much right behind me there, where someone's been going crazy on the tailings. You all right? Yeah. Nearly fell over. Uh, but look, I was just sort of walking along here, just being very thorough. You know, if someone's uh, done all that work behind me, why? And that sort of made me question it. Uh, was there really good gold I found on this tailings pile? Was someone on the uh, on the money? So just sort of humming around here, trying to get a signal, uh, seeing if we can pick up on something. And I got that. And I'd say it's a throw out. It's something that um, either the miner's thrown out, well, the miner has thrown it out. Uh, but then some years later, well, whoever's just uh, recently done this tailing work, I dare say they've probably thrown it out. And I dare say it's got gold in it. Just trying to look for a bit of a hint of yellow. Can't see nothing. He's got something in there, though. I mean, that could be a hot rock. And we're going to ground balance out this area. See if it still gives a signal. That could be a hot rock. However, the stones like that always interest me. And let's face it, they're worth taking home. Uh, putting under the... Um, I'll just do another ground balance there. Uh, putting under the, um, the hammer, uh, the dolly pot, and panning out. And see what comes of it. Side to side, up and down. Release the trigger. He's quite, uh, he's running quite, quite nice and stable here today. <laughs> there we go. We've got more of a signal now. There we are. Well, we've got a bit of gold for today, Dom. It's a big bit too. Interesting stuff. I said, worth taking home and that's what we're going to do with this rock. He may be a hot rock. I dare say he's got some gold in him. We're going to pan it out once home and uh, see what's inside. What's the matter, Dom? you got a bush injury, have you, buddy? What yeah. happened? So, I just had my pick all then, then I fell, and then this side. Oh, no, the sharp the side. went straight down. Do you know what? I've just sharpened that up, too. It's so, not really that. Is it my That's fault? It's not really that sharp. Oh, well, it's mainly this part. I thought I, oh, I sharpened that end, too. Oh, great. <laughs> I did a good job, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, look, that's what happens when you're chasing the gold, buddy. It's tough, mm. tough days out in the bush. Mm. So, but if, look, we may have found some gold in those rocks and it'll make up for it. We'll be able to pay the doctor's bill. Yeah. Zaz. Yeah. So I was on just one of the mountains back there where we were 
and my pick was down, but my arm, when I fell, my arm scraped onto the pick. No. Uh, that's good. Over now. Yep. Love you. Love you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. That shouldn't be turning me off for cooking him off. He does it to me. Every time we say bye or see ya, he does it. See ya. And then he cuts off and then or bye bye and then it cut off so yeah and then he just uh, comes back uh, he just comes back and he says see you or bye properly come on man make up your mind how does uh, make your voice go to uh, the other person for walkie talkies how do they work yeah it's quite interesting buddy so your walkie talkie that you've got in your pocket Show me, look. He's got a built-in transmitter, and he's also got a built-in receiver and a speaker, and it runs off a frequency. So when you push the button, shh, hello, Xavier, Zave gets a, a transmitted signal that is sent from this because it's got a, uh, a sender unit which sends the signal via a frequency. And Zave's walkie-talkie, well, there he is there. He's got a transmitter, and that transmit, and that picks up the signal and then you receive it through your end. So yours has got a transmitter and a receiver, and so has Xavier. And that's how walkie-talkie yeah. works, and they work off frequency. And if you change the channel, you're changing, uh, changing the frequency what? channel. So what now Zave can't hear you. 73. There we go. And I guess that they just like put that there just for like a decoration? That's the antenna. That's where the signal goes out of. And, and uh, Zave picks up what? his signal. I love that tone. I love that. But <laughs> funny lads. Just wait. Oh, how'd you go, Andrew? You get anything? Nothing. Just lead. One rusty nugget. Well, I think I've got another nugget today. I remember I got me hot rock up in the car already. The big stone as big as my head. Well, we got another hot rock. That's all we're bound to find today. Hot, hot rocks. So we'll sit him here. Let's have a listen. What the uh, five thousand does. And then we'll uh, flick back on the uh, the 6,000 if we need and give Andrew an old listen. Whoa, there's your whales. And we've got something very special in the pocket to show too, which we'll give you a look at in a second. <gasps> Andrew can't hear nothing. Oh, he's getting a little bit. Flipped him over a bit there. Why does man, mine, why does man, why does mine sound so much more responsive than that? It's got it, but it's, it's, it's got it, but it's not there. Listen to this, turn yours off. Ready? Turn my whale on. You throw on my rock? Where is it? I've lost it. <laughs> I know, I can see it. I was only joking. Pocket. <laughs> Ready? Wait for my whales to kick in. There's my whales. Ready? Listen to the sound in it. Machine. Try doing that, ground balance. Okay. Yep. Still, made a noise. Still there. Yep, 100%. We'll just try them again. The problem is, um, there's a target there, Andrew. Is that your coil? Yeah, it is too. God, they're sensitive. So, completely different than the um, coin relic machines. We'll just pump that coil a bit. Do a ground balance. And have a listen. Like you wouldn't walk away from that. No. You gotta second guess what's inside, don't you? After doing that ground balance, it's almost blanking it out now. So there you go, there is my big retirement nugget, mate. Just in uh, hot rock form. 
so that's all right. Yeah, we should do that. But look, what we'll do is we'll wait till we get home because we've got pans. I will even lay out a blanket so we don't have gold and have bits of rock flying off everywhere. And we're going to pan everything that comes out of this rock. And same with the other big rock that we've got sitting in the car. I don't know what's inside them. But always pays to check. So that's what we're going to do. So now, let's get the surprise out. It's been sitting in my pocket all day and show you a look at that. Well, unfortunately, we are lacking the gold again today. We've got nothing to show you in the hand. Uh, however, we do have it in the jumper. So just a bit of a uh, look, just a bit of an afterthought. I ran out of uh, the house this morning and I thought, why not go back and grab some of my gold and why not show my audience uh, some of the gold that I've found in the past? So I know it's not the same thing. You know, we could have took one of these nuggets out and we could have faked it today. There's no fun in that though, is there? And uh, let's let's face it, there's no truth and honesty in that either. And it's it's it, it, all yeah. And it's not the same, Andrew. Because let's face it, anybody that's found a, a bit of gold, whether it be their first bit of gold or the second or tenth or twentieth, it's the feeling that you get. F yeah. That's right. And if I was to put one of these nuggets in the ground today, not only would I be lying to my audience, you guys, but I'd be lying to myself. And uh, look, I just could not fake the excitement that you don't get when you've when, when you faked it, uh, with the excitement that you do get when you haven't faked it. Well, it's just something else. So well, let's. If you drop one of them, we will, we will be able to find it. Well, you just stay away, all right? You stay <laughs> sitting on that log over there, mate. So I am having trouble though at the moment. Oh, Andrew, can you open them? Oh, I've got. Yeah, I'll put it in the pocket. <laughs> you be careful opening that too. Uh, I've, I've, I've it, yeah, I've really twitched them up tight though. So we're going to show off my first little gold nugget. And this guy was found over in Linton. I'm not scared about giving away uh, details. Uh, basically, Linton, this has found this little nugget. And he's about a 0 0.5, 0 0.6 of a gram. So it's not even a gram weight. Uh, basically, what happened, though, is Andrew and I were working down in the gully. Uh, we were down there all morning, pretty much like what we've done today. I went back to the car with my 4,500. And I decided that, uh, well, after a drink and after a bite to eat, there's no way I was walking back down in that gully where Andrew was. It was miles away. So I thought, well, there was a reef shedding up off the top, uh, down into the gully where all the miners were digging the gold. I wonder, I wonder if I walked off the track here with my 4500, uh, walking up to that reef, whether I could find a bit. And bingo, this little piece here, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, as I said, he come about a metre off the track that I literally drove in to get to that spot that day. So just goes to show, you never know where you're going to find gold. And as I said, that was my first ever little tiny nugget with the 4500 and that's the one i showed on film there the other week uh, i had a bit of a snapchat video and uh basically oh, it was oh no quick <laughs> after it it was sort of turny turvy a uh, twisty turvy the camera was going all over the place uh, early days filming back then uh, so uh look it was a bit dodgy footage uh, but i do have that first little nugget that andrew's got uh, coming out on film andrew that's my second one andrew has been there for both of these too so he can confirm that no well, you've the whole three, yeah. So uh, Luke's not a liar. Luke is not lying. That is my first nugget right there. Linton. Linton. And actually, he come out of a place called Nuggety Gully. So there we go. Yeah. Uh, little <laughs> gold nugget in Nuggety Gully. Oh, I nearly dropped that one. Now, this next one, uh, I'm not going to say where this come from because this has actually come off private property, which uh, Andrew and I have, to go, uh, have got to get back to very soon and have another look at. Uh, but um, private property, we hummed in there with the patrol one day. Andrew had the GP Extreme. I had the uh, GP uh, X4500 from Mine Lab. And I swear to God, how did it go, Andrew? You tell the story. Oh, I can't remember. It's that long. Ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell it and it'll jig your memory. Yeah, we drove him with the patrol. Luke jumped out of his car. Luke started up his 4500. Yeah. And Luke walked straight on to... That nugget, <laughs> right beside the car. Within like 10 metres of the car, not within, far, yeah, and what was it, like not even an inch down, it was literally it's sitting on the surface, a bit of a, uh, a surfaced area this one, uh, but he was literally sitting on the surface, it's about a 0 0.8, 0 0.9 this guy, so he's nearly uh, getting up to a gram there, uh, but look, he was literally found, I pulled up and 10 minutes I was holding this nugget after uh, gram balancing and noise cancelling the 4500. So really, really cool. Gold is where you find it. And there is another little piece. And you can see the difference in those two pieces there. Whoops, I nearly lost them. Uh, just show you a look there. You can see how the one in the container from Nuggety Gully, well, he's very nuggety. Uh, you can see the one sitting up on top there from private property. Well, he's a lot more rounded. So uh, the roundness shows that little bit more water-worn uh, coming through. 
on the nugget, the more uh, raggedy nuggety he is, uh, the, the further or the less chance he's um, travelled far from the source. So he would have shared it off the reef and then made his way down the hill and bingo bango, uh, that's where I, uh, I hit him on uh, with the 4500. So that's, oh no! Oh, oh, you got me worried, mate. <laughs> oh, and that is my last and final nugget. And I'm going to let Andrew grab him out. Uh, once again, I found with the uh, the detector with the 4500. I've really tightened those lids up. I didn't want to lose my gold today. We're out here to find it, not lose it. And uh, last week I lost my sunnies and my shirt. <laughs> so I can't afford to lose my gold out in the bush. So there is last little nuggy, and this one's really interesting because he's got a bit of a natural form about him. If you flip him over the back there, you can see he's just got a bit of a dirty iron stone hanging off him. Uh, on the front there is where the little nugget is. So really, really cool. And what we're going to do here today, uh, look, I've already found these. We don't need to refine them unless we drop them. What we're going to do though is we're going to set them up and going to give you a listen. Uh, we'll set one target up here, one in the middle, one off to the side. We're going to run the 6,000 and the 5,000 over all three nuggets and give you a bit of a listen at what they sound like. So very, very cool. I just love gold. And he, uh, let me just flip him back over. He is very jaggedy, very sharp in places. He's very reefy, isn't he? He's very reefy. So where's your friends? Where's your mates? Yeah. Uh, oh dear. I'm going to lose this. I was going to say, you pick it up. Perfect. And uh, as I said, we'll set these up as a bit of a test patch. Uh, so my first nuggy, Linton Gold, private property gold, and more private property gold. But we'll set them up a one, two, and three, a run over the 6,000 and the 5,000 before we get out of here today and give you a listen at the sound in both machines. Perfect. All right, Andrew's first. And what do you got? The private property nugget, the little nugget, the last one. So GPX 5000, 11 inch commando coil on, or commander coil. Oh, where'd that nugget go? He's disappeared on you. What's, okay. what one's that one? Can I just have a look at him? Let's have a look. Oh, okay, so he is actually the third one that we looked at. He's the one with the iron stone on him. So he's actually the smallest bit of gold. So there we go. This one over the back here. Aha, that's Linton gold with ants all over it. So that's the uh, the Linton gold, my first bit of gold. That's my second bit of gold, walking straight out of the car from the patrol and hitting on him. And that's my third bit of gold. So the smallest bit of gold, that's the biggest bit, as you can tell. That's blanking that machine out. Blanking it. Yeah. Big guy. Big retirement nugget there, Andrew. <laughs> Underneath that one. Why are you laughing? <laughs> did I say something funny, did I? <laughs> <laughs> if you could retire on that nugget mate we'd be laughing we wouldn't be out here for long would we we'd be out here to find a few nuggets and we'd be off to uh, off to the uh, hawaiian islands sipping yeah <laughs> sipping pina coladas oh yeah all right we'll just wait for this machine to turn on andrew's had his go i just wanted to show the difference uh, the 6000 is a lot more responsive and it does sound like it um well, it hits on, uh, hits on these targets a little bit louder. So back to high sensitivity, max sensitivity. And we're not even going to do a ground balance. We don't need to. We can find our targets quite easily. So first target, uh, that is my first bit of gold from Linton with the 4500. Swinging straight over the top of him. That is blanking it out. So we'll just go up a bit. I reckon we've got a storm approaching too, Andrew. Because I'm getting these... Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm noticing the same. You hear those sort of warbles coming through the machine? There it is right there. Yeah, so look, we've got a bit of road noise, a bit of EMI. I mean, I didn't do a noise cancel or ground balance properly then. But I dare say, we've got a storm approaching. We've got a house directly straight across there. Yeah. So we're probably getting electrical interference off the house. Yeah, and... I'd, that's right, and I dare say with that storm approaching, that's what we're starting to hear. Because uh, the detectives were running so quiet this morning. So first nugget, easy one. Second nugget, and this one was um, the littlest nugget, the one with the iron stone on the back. If 
Very similar to yours almost, like it's not like it's, I mean, it's a bit more responsive. I mean, it's nearly blanking it out there. That's right under the, um, the Mine Lab sticker though. And good old Mine Lab. And last target, uh, that was our biggest nugget on site today. Uh, that's the one that was found just out of the car. So he should blank him out all day of the week. Just like that. And we'll go up a bit. Probably about two inches away or three inches away now, Andrew. Yeah, probably four. Four. Probably close to six there. Yeah. Six. And I'd still dig that. That amount of breaking threshold. If I heard that repeatable enough, I would definitely, I definitely. Very first nugget sound a bit like that. Yeah. Very faint. Yep. That's right. That's right, and that's what you're listening for. And ideally, I have not shown any settings on the gold detectors just yet. But look, it's pretty simple stuff. You're ideally trying to run the threshold as loud as you can, but as uh, as solid and as constant as you can uh, can without it breaking. Uh, whenever it breaks is when it indicates that there's a target there. And same thing with threshold off. Uh, with the threshold tone off in auto one the same thing when you go over a target you know you don't have a threshold tone at all which is great and when you go over a target though that's when you're going to get your tone indicating that there's a target there to dig and for you to go after it so even this middle one here auto one i mean i'd dig that 100 percent, because there's no other target as you're humming through the bush until you hit on that gold with the threshold, uh, the auto one threshold setting. So back to manual sensitivity, uh, max manual sensitivity with threshold on, and you're hearing that threshold all the time, it only breaks when you go over the target and alters and changes. So look, interesting stuff. We've got a little bit more learning to do and not too much. We obviously know how to find gold. We've got three bits in front that we detected out with the 4500 in the past. However, it's been a while. So look, new machine, a new new gold areas. You know, we don't really have, um, look where all the sites that we were going to years ago, uh, we're sort of trying to change it up now. So we need new sites to find and hunt. And we don't have the, <laughs> yeah, Toyota, where are you? Nissan, where are you? Um, look, we don't have the four wheel drive though. So we're limited to parking on roads and having to walk our way in. That also limits us to the places that we can go and the sites that we can access. So, but look, that's, um, that's all here and there and neither here and there. And at the end of the day, it's about getting out and having fun, a bit of exercise, a bit of mental health happiness. That's what we're out here for, not really the gold. And mind you though, I've zipped up those three bits and they're coming home with me because we're not leaving them out here. So anyway, boys, did you have fun? Yeah. And what did you learn today? You learned about rivers flowing? And what else did you learn? Uh, learned about gold. Yeah, you learned about gold. And you've learned about slate and quartz and ironstone. Mm -hmm. And I've even taught Dom how to detect a little bit with gold. It's a little bit different than the coins and relics, mm -hmm. isn't it? And you know what we're going to go do now? Home. Seems though we've only got hot rocks to show for today. One in my pouch and one in the car. What we're going to do today, for the rest of the afternoon, is we're going to go to a river. And we're going to go take some pay dirt home. And we can pan it when we get home and see if we've got gold. So, awesome. All right, that's what we're going to do. And as you can see, a par's off uh, back into it. Uh, but look, we're going to get out of here for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed. No gold for today, but I hope you enjoyed seeing those three bits of gold that I've found in the past hunting with the Mine Lab 4500. So, anyway, we'll be back out with the 6000 once again. And I look forward to seeing you there. Cheers.